I'm David Dalton, professor of viola at Brigham Young University. The late and great violist William Primrose was my teacher and friend. And I have a vintage film to show you of this wonderful artist in performance. But before we see the film, I would like to say a few things about Mr. Primrose and the extensive Primrose archive here at Brigham Young University. Primrose spent his last three years here at BYU. Before this, we had worked together on his memoirs, which BYU Press then published as Walk on the North Side. An outgrowth of this collaboration is still another book, Playing the Viola, Conversations with William Primrose, which is being published by Oxford University Press in the near future. Primrose gave his personal library and memorabilia to Brigham Young University, and this laid the foundation for the Primrose International Viola Archive, which is housed in the BYU Library. To honor and perpetuate the name of the greatest virtuoso of the viola, it is our wish to expand the Primrose Archive. We want to establish it as the most important international center for materials relating to violas and to the viola and its literature. The Primrose International Viola Archive has four divisions. Contained in the open stacks are published examples of viola music bound in red and white. Each bears a distinctive book plate. These scores presently number about 4,000 items, making this the largest collection of viola music in the world. Another division houses manuscripts of viola music, some scores which were dedicated to Primrose. Others are Primrose's own transcriptions and editions. Then there are the memorabilia, which review the Primrose career, including a press clipping volume, reviews, articles, flyers, poster citations, and personal letters. There is also an extensive photo collection, which traces Primrose's life from very near the beginning to his death in 1982 at the age of 77. Finally, there is the record collection. The Primrose International Viola Archive has on hand an example of every recording that Primrose made as a soloist and chamber musician. We also wish to have many of his recordings reissued, perhaps making available some of these early discs that have never been released. We would further like to make available the last recording that Primrose made at age 75 of the Bach cello suites. This is a large undertaking and an expensive one. But now let's look at this film which I promised you it is entitled simply William Primrose, Violist. It was produced in 1946 when Primrose was 42 and it shows him in his prime as a violist. Other than the TV documentary A Violist Legacy produced at BYU when Primrose was about 75, this is the only filmed account known to me of the master in performance. Over the credits, you will hear a few bars of the familiar Bach air. In regard to the Bach, I believe if the viewer were not made aware through the title that a violist was playing, he might have the impression that a cello was being heard. So warm and sonorous is the sound. The legendary primrose tone is evident in the performance of his own transcription of Schubert's Ave Maria. Take note also in the Schubert of his wonderful legato stroke and the marvelous natural vibrato. I say natural because Primrose was never taught vibrato, he claimed. It came to him intuitively. During this piece, which is the only one in a slow tempo, you will have ample time to observe his left hand. Here we have a Japanese print of Primrose's hand Notice the unusually long and thick fourth finger. The tip of his fourth finger extended well above the first joint of the third finger, unlike the fourth finger of most of us mortals. It was a hand custom made for the viola. 
Primrose opens with the Polacca from Beethoven's Noturno, Opus 42. Take note of the bow, the deftness of his stroke, and the ease with which he passes from sautier to spiccato to any other bowing technique. He makes it look so easy, like cutting through warm butter. The Paganini 24th Caprice closes the program. Once again, Primrose himself transcribed the piece. It shows various aspects in both the right and left hands of the incomparable Primrose technique. I particularly like what he does with the pizzicato variation. He seems to go Latin and gives it a particularly and characteristic rhythmic flair of the dance. Watch Primrose as he plays, his remarkable dexterity and the impressive articulation and clarity from the lower positions to the top of the fingerboard.
you have seen one of the great performing artists of his time. Whether it was Paganini or Schubert, Primrose had an infallible sense of style, and you would recognize this again were he to play Brahms or, or Bartok. It all seemed so right. His left-hand technique was extraordinary, due in part, I believe, to a highly sensitive nervous system which generated exceptionally quick responses. His tone was one of rare sweetness and beauty. And his bow arm was a most artful thing, probably the greatest I have witnessed. One of his gifts, sometimes overshadowed by his technical prowess, was his imagination, his fantasy, which often left those of us who came under his tutelage lamenting, why couldn't I have thought of that? One could learn much more from Primrose than how to play the viola. To me, the most significant thing he said had nothing to do with the viola. When I asked him on a TV interview, in the face of your near-fatal coronary, your fateful loss of hearing, which did much toward bringing your active playing career to a close, and the recent discovery of your terminal illness, how have you kept from becoming cynical or bitter? He answered, well, I suppose, no, I know that there is a power above which sustains us all. In his memoirs, William Primrose wrote, At the risk of being regarded as maudlin, I am bound to say that I deeply respond to the awe-inspiringness of great vistas, the restfulness of an English village, the glory of music and pictures and poetry and gracious prose, the soft supplication of a sunset, and the fury of storms at sea. Someone once wrote, it's been a lovely party. I really hate to leave it. It's been a lovely party. I really must repeat it. I look forward to the glories of the world to come port after stormy seas, death after life, does greatly please. At about the time the 1946 film was made, one reviewer, after having heard a Primrose concert, asked rhetorically, was this the greatest example of playing bow on string? In the age of Heifetz, Milstein, Feuermann and others, it is a rather bold assertion. Then again, it may not be so far from the truth. I hope you have enjoyed this program.